It is with a heavy heart that I call this month's board meeting to order. As you notice, we have an empty seat here. One of our board members died <clears throat> tragically last month, and uh, I would just like to take this time to ask for a moment of silence in memory of Jackie Simmons and what he did for our county and our county schools and in prayer for his family. So let's now have a moment of silence. Thank you. Now, Principal Dan Palamatecas for Central Elementary School will introduce the student who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. All right, members of the board, Dr. Dobney, Superintendent Mr. Stefanik, uh, this is Leah Newburn, and this is Aldo C.S. Lazama. They are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would you please rise? I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this month's school spotlight is on Central Elementary School, and I'll just turn it over to Principal Dan Palamatecas. Thank you again for having us here tonight. Um, I brought uh, two teachers with me. Um, I brought Miss Diane Ross, who is our media specialist, also teaches AIG at Central. And I brought uh, Haley Bartolotta, who actually serves at three different schools. She serves at my school, at uh, Griggs Elementary School, and also at... Uh, Jarvisburg Elementary School. She is our computer lab instruction um, person, teacher, and they have brought some uh, STEM activities that they were doing with kids at Central. They have a video they want to show you and talk to you a little bit about those activities. So I'll turn it over to Miss Diane Ross. Hi, everyone. Um, one of the goals in the Media Center and for the AI, <coughs> excuse me, the AIG plan is to increase the number of STEM, STEAM, and STREAM activities. And so uh, the fourth and fifth grade AIG students are learning about robotics and programming or coding using a small robot called an Ozobot. And um, it's very small. It's the tiniest. Very small. What's it called? Does it, does it talk? No, no what's, what's it, called? it called? Oh, Ozobot. O-Z-O-B-O-T. Um, so the Ozobot follows lines or roams around freely. It detects colors and can also be programmed. And on the bottom of the Ozobot, um, there are five eyeballs, basically. They're little slots. And one of them detects colors. And... Um, so the company <clears throat> provides lessons uh, for ages 8 through high school. And we just got started on them last week, a couple weeks ago. And um, so we have completed the first lesson, which was in four parts, and um, pretty basic. And then, um, but the kids began... Uh, programming, it uses colors, so the, the kids were programming using colors and um, using these codes, and I know you probably can't see them, but some of them are two colors, some of them are three colors, four, and so on, and they do different things like the Ozobot follows the colors and um, speeds up, slows down, makes right turns, left turns, so, and so on and so forth. And um, so in the first lesson, they learned about physics through optics, the visual eyes on the bottom, and uh, robotics, of course, line following and color sensing, and math uh, problem solving. And in the second lesson that we haven't started yet, but they'll learn about fractions and probability. And so to get started with it, I just 
kind of handed them the Ozobots, and they just naturally um, took to them and just enjoyed it. They absolutely loved them. And I think you'll see that in the video. So, um, so the video is of two fourth grade students. And um, we're going to put the video so we can start it. <laughs> Did yours need to be calibrated? <clears throat> Excuse me. There you go, slow, slow. Do you have a turbo boost in there? Let's see if he goes fast. Yep, there he goes. <laughs> You're going to make your own course? Do you remember how hard it should be? <clears throat> a quarter of an inch. So, just just like the what's on your paper that was already printed. So somewhere close to that, because if it gets too wide, it will it won't follow a straight line. It will go off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we also have Haley Bartolotta with us tonight who brought a different robotics piece that she's going to share with you all. Hello. <laughs> um, I too have a, uh, there's a video up there as well. Just ignore the commentary most of the time. Um, that's because I'm not familiar or not used to like videotaping at the students and communicating what I was trying to get across to you. This is Spiro. Um, for anyone that knows Mark Sandberg at our regional it is conference, a waterproof. He was one who Android introduced me to in the coding OMG robots. Um, the kids section. are broken up and into small I figured groups how can I apply this to different um, obstacle kids. courses. This is week one with it. Uh, they are going what they to do is they use drag and drop codes. White tape. Um, they're using my and phone right now because I'm waiting on my iPod the or iPads box. from the technology department. And it's a program where they can drag and drop blocks. And they decide where and how fast and what degrees the Sphero rolls. We create obstacle courses. Uh, this first week, we are just doing a small obstacle course, clearly. <laughs> and there were three set up around the room using masking tape. And the goal is to have Sphero roll into the square box and stop. Um, the nice thing is, with growth mindset in mind, they fail. The neat thing they about fail Sphero often. is, even though this is a straight and, line, um, with, the um, with their failure, courses, they keep trying and trying and trying. Their own and then they succeed. And, and you'll see the at one point they find out out what degree and that ball get makes it into that little square. Just how excited they are that the they did it. Um, the other, the opportunities with Sphero are absolutely endless. This model in particular is a waterproof model. So they can build boats and we can have races and little pools and they can, um, it propels them forward. 
we can paint like they do, I think, at the high school, which I saw Anita in here. <laughs> Coding um, is you always can paint really using good for problem solving. They can build their own um, obstacle courses using ramps and different paths and different materials. That it's cause, so it's cause and effect. What, that's really what drew me to it, is that it combines all Program. these so it opportunities to exercise for engineering and math and science and technology. And challenge because we're really not going to have not give up. as far as technology goes. It's here to stay. Um, the other thing is just how excited they are about Spiro. And I'm trying to get these kids to be use their creativity and their innovation to not only be technology consumers, but technology creators. And I think this is the right path because I've had just in the few weeks that we've worked with this, they the first the first time every class, every student says, How much are they? Where can I get them? I want to buy them. By the end of the week, they're like, this is so cool. What, I want to make something like this. And so that is really where we're driving and trying to strive for. So I think they, I think they keep getting close. <laughs> well, you will and you please stop. And I like the little like hand pump at the end from little Katrina. So that is what we're doing at all three schools, and I encourage you to come by at any time. Just follow my schedule and um, and check it out. It's third through fifth grade that I'm really using and working with it. So. Great. Thank you very much. I'm sure the students will continually enjoy it. Looks like they're having a lot of fun. Okay, uh, next item, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. I have a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, next is earlier today we had a work session, and during the work session we received a review of uh, Curry Tech School's fiscal year 2016-17 budget. Uh, we received uh, information on the district school improvement plan and individual school improvement plans from Knotts Island, Shawborough, and Jarvisburg. We also obtained the first reading of a revised technology policies for technology responsible use and student staff relations. <clears throat> also, there was a discussion of policy 3420, student promotion and accountability, and policy 7335, employee use of social media. We also re received some information on alternative meal charges and uh, the superintendent and principals will report back to us more about that when we can figure out how to reduce the number of charges <coughs> without any of the students going hungry, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a special called meeting to decide how we were going to replace Mr. Simmons' seat, and right now, through October 19th, we're taking applications from people that live in Crawford Township. Uh, that would like to be interviewed for the possible position. <clears throat> also at that meeting, the board decided to purchase its own drug dog to help with uh, keeping the situation of drugs within our schools under control. It's not a major problem, but we want to make sure it doesn't turn into a major problem. And that's why we decided to purchase our own drug dog. Next, I'd like to... Uh, try to straighten out some misinformation. At the uh, forum the other night where we had candidates for, uh, for the Board of Education seat, one of the candidates kind of painted the picture that our math scores were abysmal. And to use statistics from the same years, and I think he reported 47% and 45%, <clears throat> when in actuality, in 2014-15, our math performance composite, and that's the uh, for the grade level proficiency for third through eighth grade, was 50 or 54.1, and the state average was 52.2. So we were above the state average there. Math one performance composite for the high school was 65.7, and the state average was 59.8. So I'd just like to straighten that out, that both our math performance scores were above the state average and not 45 and 47 like was mentioned at the uh, forum. And also, we had, what, 9 out of 10 schools that met the uh, 
standards for uh, what growth. improved growth. growth standards. Growth okay. standard. Right. Yep. So that was some misinformation that the <clears throat> other person said. <clears throat> okay, now the fun part. We get to uh, go to the 2016-17 ARC calendar and the recognition of the student winners. And I'll turn it over to Ms. Kinzel and the Board of Ed and Superintendent will come down front here. Yes, and this is going to help us as well. So while you're coming forward. <clears throat> I'll speak to the audience this time. How about it? <laughs> Good evening. Um, each year, the Board of Education sponsors a calendar contest where students submit original works to be considered for selection uh, and publication into an annual art calendar. Uh, over, We've been doing this for over 20 years, and um, each year... The calendar is created, we've, we've tweaked things, but each year the artwork that's submitted and selected just continues to exceed our expectations. We've got some fabulous artists in our, in our midst tonight, as well as across the county. So um, we have our calendar features uh, the first, second, third place winners from each of uh, four categories. One that is specifically at the high school level for high school photography. We have a category for nine through 12, just regular artwork. We have um, six through eight artwork, three through five, and then we have um, the K2. I might be off by one. So with the um, digital age, we have been able to accept more different types of artwork that can be displayed. And you'll notice in our calendars uh, this year, we have locker art where students use tape to uh, create art. And that was captured digitally and could be um, submitted. So we have a lot of really good um, and interesting pieces of art that um, are submitted and featured in this year's calendar. So with that being said, we had a, a, our reception earlier this evening. And now we've invited you, if you weathered the storm, to come over with us so we could recognize you um, during our meeting and present you with your awards and certificates. So we will start with uh, honorable mentions in each category, and we will um, build up to the first, second, and third place winners. All right? All right, starting with our senior division, the 9 through 12, uh, this would be our artists, just regular artwork. Uh, we have Olivia Smith. From Currituck County High School. Honorable mention was Madison Pate from Currituck County High School. And when I call your name, if you're here, come on up. <laughs> and some of these have graduated, some of our students have graduated already. Um, we had a very interesting piece of art that was a collaborative piece that was selected as um, our cover this year. Not me. I dropped. Oh, thank goodness. Um, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll redo that in a minute. Um, Melissa Gilbert from the high school was also an honorable mention. There she is. Yay! The first. <laughs> Alexis Daniels from the high school, also an honorable mention. I'm going to go back to where I was before. Frank Haskell and Sydney Elliott collaborated uh, to create our cover art, which depicts... Um, the Kurtuk Ferry. So it was a really neat piece, and, and I'm glad it was featured on the on the cover this year. All right, um, third place winner. I know she's here. Sabrina Wharton. There she is. Congratulations. Thank you. She also submitted another piece that was an honorable mention piece as well. So she had both a third place entry and an honorable mention. Because this is a blind um, judging. The pieces that come in, I mean, it's often we have multiple winners selected, and we don't know it until the very end when we reveal names and put it on the list. So um, you'll see a lot of, um, of our names repeated here. Our second place was Sarah Ann Prainer. She was second place from Currituck County High School. And our first place winner, uh, who was also a dual-recognized artist, for an honorable mention and first place in this division was Marina Martin. Yay! She made a long trip to come see us. So yes. Thank you long. so much. 
The 912 photography, which was a digital submission as well. We're going to recognize a couple of other folks again. Sarah Ann Craner was an honorable mention. Uh, Andrew Mason from the Kurtikai High School. Isaac Locklear, also from the high school. Isabella Hampton from the high school. Okay, we're going to get straight to the first, second, and third places. Third place, Miss Megan Gubbs. She has a dual recognized piece in there too. Honorable mention in third place. Our second place winner was Mackenzie Kelleher. She also is from the high school. And our first place winner here again with an honorable mention as well as first place entry was Madison Phillips. Okay, congratulations. <laughs> junior division. All right, the art uh, that was submitted for the, the junior division six through eight was um, under the leadership of Jesse McClary from both middle schools. And I'd be remiss if I didn't um, recognize our high school art teachers, uh, Ms. Claire Vinnick, as well as Anita Rubino Thomas, who's with us here tonight. So thank you for all your talents and sharing. Okay, so our honorable mentions for um, the junior division, Savannah Webb from Moyock Middle. Mia Kincaid from Moyock Middle. Uh, Anthony Jones from Moyock Middle. Abigail Jones from Moyock Middle. Don't know if they're related. Uh, Alyssa Howard from Moyock Middle School. Okay. Apalia Gutierrez from Moyock Middle. Um, Callie Bassnett from Kirtuk Middle. All right. Guess the rain kept them away. I'm thinking the rain kept them away. Um, our third place winner, though, in this division was Kenzie Fatick. Our second place winner was Valerie Pistella. And our first place winner, and I know she's here because I met her, yay, is Chevy Worrell. Yay. You, you represent six through eight grade tonight. All right, in our third through fifth grade division, the honorable mentions were Olivia Slaughter from Jarvisburg. There she is. Yay! We're on a better roll here. Yes, we're going to get two in a row. Leah Newburn, come on down. Woohoo! <laughs> Jennifer Labounty from Central. All right. Gracelyn Hill from Central. I'm sorry, from Griggs. No? All right. Juan Gomez from Central. Ashlyn uh, Dunnigan from Moyock Elementary. And Daniel Cox from Not Silent. All right. Our third place winter winner is Winter Simmons <laughs> from Sharborough. The second place is, and I know she's here, Ava, Ava Dane. Come on down. Yay. <laughs> and she's from Griggs. And our first place winner, again, was a collaboration um, of art that uh, I spoke of earlier with the locker art. And that was Travis Herman and Brooke Ireland from Knott's Island. So. Okay. Final division is our K2. Our honorable mentions were Hunter Waterfield from Knott's Island. Cicely Trembley. She's from Griggs. <laughs> Yay! You got it. All right. Carson Sawyer from Moyock Elementary. There she is. Yay! Lauren Sarver from Sharborough. There she is. Okay. Um, our pledge leader tonight, Alda uh, Saliz um, Lazama. And I, I practiced, I promise. I, I, <laughs> sorry. All right, Gretchen Canny from Griggs. And he's here too, Design Banks from Jarvisburg. Okay. You brought the whole family tonight, didn't you? <laughs> yes, you did. And we're proud of you, too. Our third place winner, and she's here, too, Maria Lasher from Griggs. <laughs> Very good. Our second place winner, Max Delirious Solis 
from Jarvisburg. Okay, and our first place winner in the K2 was Krista Bowser. There she is. Very good. People are going to come around back and come over for another picture so I can get everybody in one. And my, my little people, you're going to be up front. Okay? All right. And if you're looking at the back of somebody's head, you're going to have to move. They won't be able to see you. All right? Come on up. <laughs> You got it. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Audience is standing up. Let them take it. I know, really. Mom wants to see your face. Chances I'm going to give them my better side <laughs> when they're done. You ready? All right. All right, one more. <laughs> All right, this is the real good one, okay? This is the one that's going to go into the papers. Smile, everybody. Stay with me. Awesome. Congratulations. Okay, all the students are welcome to go home if you'd like. Y'all drive carefully, please. It was pouring pretty good when we came in. You're welcome. Thank you. Now hold this up for the camera so they can see the cover photo for this year's art calendar. Oh, there it is. We got it. It's the fairy. I have to say, I'm you know I'm a Knott's Island girl. I have to be a little excited about that. <laughs> Thank you, sweetie. That was it. You know what? That was the best thanks I could have gotten. Thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, our next item on the agenda is the student board member reports, and we have Sydney, Jacob, and Tyler with us tonight. So we'll start with Sydney. Good evening, everybody. I'm going to be reporting Central Elementary, Curry Tuck High, and Curry Tuck Middle. So from Central Elementary, the students at Central Elementary School are working on their growth mindsets. We are learning about the power of yet. Our benchmark assessments have pretty much concluded and teachers are working hard to during their PLCs to develop plans based on the results. We are excited to be worked, working through MTSS and expecting to see results improve and our efforts pay off. Highlights to come in this month include fire prevention assemblies, Rachel's Challenge assemblies, and the Red Ribbon Week from October 24th to 28th. The HSA organization for Central is hosting its October meeting at the school on the 20th <coughs> starting at 6 p.m. The evening will include some fun bingo action. Also, on October 27th, the CES staff will be hosting our first Title I Parent Involvement Event of the Year. Parents' flyers will be sent out, and the evening will include light refreshments and information on important topics happening at Central, including Engage New York, The Growth Mindset, The Seven Habits, and Read to Achieve and others. We want to encourage our CES students to attend the event, as well as there will be activities and prizes to be won. That sounds fun. <laughs> From Curry Tuck High, Curry Tuck High is in the middle of Spirit Week 2016. Today was Red Out Day. The Curry Tuck High Marching Knights earned first overall in their class at the Edenton Peanut Festival this weekend. They will be traveling to Pasco Tank and Havelock later this month. 
The PSAT will be administered on October 19th for students. And on October 24th, colleges from all over the state will be setting up in the cafetorium for juniors and seniors. We look forward to a great month at CCHS. And from Curry Tuck County Middle School, we are rolling into October. Each of our athletic teams have winning records and continue to excel in the classroom. The NC School of Math and Science visited with our 7th and 8th grade honors classes on October 4th. Yearbooks are on sale, so please visit our updated website and place your order. And with that, to Jacob. Good evening, everybody. I'll be covering Jarvisburg Elementary, Knott's Island Elementary, Moyock Elementary, and Moyock Middle. So Jarvisburg Elementary has had a great start to the school year with students embracing the seven habits and working hard as a school team to be the best students they can be. They recently had their first math night where parents and students were able to come in and participate in math activities and sessions explaining Engage NY and our Common Core Standards. On Wednesday, October 5th, students participated in Rachel's Challenge. Makeup pictures for the fall sitting will take place on November 3rd. For Knott's Island Elementary, they had a busy October planned. They'll host the Rachel's Challenge for the students on October 7th. The Knott's Island Fire Department and EMS will be visiting and sharing safety tips with the students. The 4th and 5th graders will be participating in a bike rodeo to learn bike safety. Red Ribbon Week will be on the week of October 24th. That week will also have the book fair taking place. Families are invited to attend a vocabulary parade on the 26th and stay for lunch with a loved one. The PTA will be holding their annual fall festival on October 28th, and everyone is invited to come in and join the, on the festivities. For Moyock Elementary, during the month of October, the Panthers are working <coughs> extra hard on being kind. Their school had their Rachel's Challenge Assembly on Tuesday, October 4th, and are working on making kindness change, chains to display in the school. They're excited to observe Fire Prevention Week on October 10th to October 14th when Moyock volunteer firefighters will visit the school, participate in PE classes, and share fire safety tips with them. Their next family afternoon reading is October 10th from 2.30 to 4.30 in the Media Center, and staff are invited to attend dressed as storybook characters. They'll have their PTA Fall Festival on October 14th from 5 to 8, so please join them for some fall fun. Red Ribbon Week is October 24th to October 28th, where they'll focus on making good personal choices. What a great month to be a Panther. And for Moyock Middle, in September, a group of 890 chorus students across the state auditioned for the North Carolina Middle School Honors Chorus. Seven Moyock Middle School students were selected to participate, and out of the seven, Matthew Barry and James Brewer earned a seat in the choir. So great job to them. They'll travel to Winston-Salem on the weekend of November 4th and perform with other middle school students from across the state. The chorus benef benefit concert will be held Tuesday, October 11th at 6.30 in the gym. Admission to the concert is by, no, by donation, and all proceeds will go to the Currituck Kids Foundation. The sixth grade band concert will be on Thursday, October 13th at 6.30 in the gym, and their beta club induction will be on Tuesday, October 25th at 6.30. And with that, I'd like to pass it off to Tyler. Hi, I'll be going over J.P. Knapp Early College, Griggs Elementary, and Shawbury Elementary. JP Knapp is finishing up our student government's Spartan Spirit Week. Our first nine-week rating period ends tomorrow. Parent conferences will take place on October 13th from, from 4 to 6 p.m. All of our 11th graders will be taking the PSAT on October 19th. Beta Club inductions will be held at JP Knapp on October 27th. SGO will be sponsoring a blood drive on October 31st. Moving on to Griggs Elementary, Ra Rachel's Challenge was presented to students on Thursday, October 6th. Griggs Elementary will be hosting a book fair from October 10th to October 14th. Family Reading Night is Thursday, October 13th from 5 to 7 with a campout theme. Families are invited to come read with children in tents, make s'mores, eat dinner, and learn lots of great strategies to help with reading. Red Ribbon Week will occur October 24th to October 28th. Finally, Shawsboro Elementary students have been working extremely hard this nine weeks. Progress reports went home last week and we have a bunch of proud teachers and parents. We hosted Rachel's Challenge on October 3rd. It was a wonderful presentation and our students really began demonstrating kind acts as a result. Later during the month of October we will host Fire Prevention Day activities with the Crawford Fire Department in Red Ribbon Week. 
Our kindergartners have been busy with their YC YMCA swim lessons, and on October 21st, they will participate in Nursery Rhyme Day. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, the next item on the agenda, approval of the 2016-17 Craytuck County Schools fiscal year budget. Now I'll turn it over to Superintendent Stefanik. Thank you, Dr. Dobney. Uh, Ms. Trussell and her staff uh, have uh, put together the uh, uh, budget for uh, this coming school year. Uh, all the line items are added together. The uh, total budget is uh, $42,327,386.85. <laughs> If you don't have any questions about any specific line items, I would like to recommend that uh, the board approve uh, the annual budget for this coming school year. And I might mention that we discussed this at our work session and that. Yes. So. I make the motion that we approve the, the uh, budget. I second it. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Since there's no discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes and our, we have our school budget for next year, for this year. <coughs> Next, adoption of revised policy 3420, student promotion and accountability, and policy 7335, employee use of social media. Now I'll turn it back over to Superintendent Stefanik. Thank you again, Dr. Domney. Um, these two policies, um, due to the fact that they uh, um, provide students some uh, uh, immediate opportunities and uh, some additional guidelines for staff members, uh, we're asking the board to uh, uh, invoke policy uh, 2450 and take care of both readings uh, at this board meeting so we can make them active policies as soon as possible. Okay. <clears throat> policy 2450 allows the board to suspend any of its board policies. So do I have a motion that we suspend one of our policies? I motion that we suspend 2450. Okay. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second that we can suspend one of our policies. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. Now we need to suspend policy 2420, adoption of policies, which requires two readings because we want to approve this with one reading. Do I have a motion that we suspend policy 2420? I have a motion that we suspend that. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. <clears throat> now we're allowed to adopt policies 3420 and 7335 just on one reading. Do I have a motion that we adopt policy 3420? I make the motion that we adopt um, 3420. Do I have a okay. second? And that was the policy that dealt with student promotion and accountability. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. <clears throat> now we go to policy 7335, which is employee use of social media. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this policy? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion passes. And I will say, you know, once again, we discussed this policy, you know, during the work session, so it's nothing new that, you know, we haven't talked about. Okay, next item, consent agenda. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Did anybody sign up for the public comment session? They did not, so we can skip that. <clears throat> Information items. Our next work session will be November 3rd, 2016, at the Professional Learning Center located at the, on the campus of J.P. Knapp Early College, and that will be at 4 o'clock. <laughs> and our next Board of Education meeting will be November 3rd, 2016, right here at the historic Craytuck Courthouse at 630. Next item, board member comments. I'll go first to Ms. Etheridge. Um, tonight, like uh, Dr. Dobney mentioned earlier, we're all just in disbelief that Jackie Simmons is no longer with us. And um, just like to say a few things. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn, and a time to dance. When a crisis occurs, bad test results, a job loss, an accident, the loss of a loved one, many of us pass through the why me. We may become confused and feel we have been personally selected for bad times. Our faith may be shaken, and God's okay with that. Don't be afraid to tell God that you're disappointed with him or angry at him. He already knows your heart. It can take us a while to recognize that we still do have a strong, abiding faith. Time passes, and we come to understand that his ways are not always our ways, but he loves us and always does what is best for us, even when we cannot fathom why or how. His timing is not always our timing. He can see things we cannot, and his timing is always perfect. We come to understand that sometimes the answers are not easy, but our faith has carried us through the difficult time. Our belief in a God greater than ourselves takes hold rather firmly until we feel an even stronger sense of faith and purpose than before. Martin Luther wrote, Faith is living in unshakable confidence of belief in the grace of God so assured that a man would die a thousand deaths for its sake. Sometimes we don't recognize it for what it is, but God has placed us a foundation of faith that will hold up in the face of tragedy. It's okay to question. It's okay to be angry. When the dust settles, our faith will still see us through. And um, just jotted down a couple of things that were on my mind tonight about Jackie. As you know, our friend and fellow board member, Jackie Simmons, passed away unexpectedly. Jackie was a friend to me over the past seven years especially. He was a school board colleague, but he was also a friend. He always had the best interest of our students and our staff at heart. He was an advocate for our students and our teachers and our staff. He truly cared for our youth and it showed. He loved athletics. When we would be able to, you know, at the end of our meetings, uh, comment, um, it would always be about sports. Jackie loved football. He loved any, any athletic event. And he encouraged everyone in the community to support all types of athletics. Jackie will be dearly missed by this whole board and our community, all the teachers, all the children, he didn't do this for the money. <laughs> he did it because he loved the kids. He loved the community. He loved Currituck County. He was an outdoorsman. He loved hunting. He loved fishing. He loved his family. Oh, he loved his wife, Mary. Every time we would talk about his wife, I could see him just beaming. He just loved Mary, and he loved his girls. Uh, because we would we would get on the topic of family a lot, and uh, you could tell he just he just loved loved his family very much. So I would ask that you pe please keep Jackie's wife Mary and his his girls in your thoughts and in your prayers. And if you can, you know, just call or send a card or um, just let them know that you're thinking of them. And he is going to be dearly missed on this board. He made us laugh so many times uh, and you know I've said it before but I've always tried to lose weight but it never works for me you know I, I'm really good for three or four days and then I crash and burn and Jackie we'd order out and Yvette would take our orders and and he'd, he'd look over at me and he said Karen you're gonna get that banana pudding tonight <laughs> I said no Jackie I'm trying to I'm trying to good do oh, really come good on, Karen. <laughs> yeah yeah he'd say I didn't ask you if you were trying to be good. He said, I asked you if you were ordering the banana pudding. And I said, yeah, I'm getting the banana pudding. <laughs> so those are the things I want to remember. He made me laugh, and um, he was a character. Uh, but he, he had the best interest of, 
of the schools at heart. So he will, he will be de dearly missed. Ms. Kraft? Yes. Um, first of all, um, Jacob mentioned that um, Matthew Berry and James Brewer were selected as the two Moyoc Middle students who earned seats in the North Carolina Middle School Honors Choir. But what I'd just like to add to that is that there were 890 students that were auditioned for that, and two of our students from Moyoc <coughs> Middle School are going to perform. So that, that's pretty significant. Um, I visited all 10 schools this um, month. We have excellent staff who are keeping our students actively engaged in learning, and it shows. You can see it when you go in our schools. One high school teacher um, last week made pancakes in her science class, and according to the pictures, it looked like it was a big success. I know. I didn't get there either. <laughs> uh, I listened to a central elementary kindergartner read a book about Johnny Appleseed. And um, I want to give a big congratulations to our calendar art winners. They did an, an awesome job, and uh, I'm really proud of them. And Karen, everything you said and more is true about Jackie Simmons. I've missed him a lot this week because I've had some construction problems at my house, and he was always my person I could go to and ask about it. So rest in peace, my friend. Ms. Gaddis. Um, I don't even know where to start. Okay. I, Knott's Island Elementary. I visited Knott's Island Elementary this um, month. I actually um, was there to greet the kids along with my child. Um, Knott's Island is a special school to me because obviously I went there and my daughter goes there. But just to see, um, and I'm, I know it's the same in every one of our schools, but to see those kids coming in in the morning and as excited they are and running into their classrooms and getting um, – getting situated and getting going. I mean, it's just amazing to see how happy they come in. Um, now, I know if they're anything like my daughter, you fight with them before they get there, trying to get them to get dressed and get going and lunches, et cetera. But it, it's great to see the motivation they come in with, how excited our staff is to see them. You know, we tend to do our visits when we do them in the, during the day, in the middle of the day, that kind of thing. But that energy they have first thing in the morning is just amazing. And um, I just want to thank all of our staff and um, students and everything for everything they do because I know they're having a blast in those classrooms but that morning time just when they're getting raring to go was was just amazing to see it's been a while since I've done that went to the football game the other night unfortunately we lost it was a great game um, had a good time Mr. Stefanik was there with me and um, watching watching it go back and forth so it was um, it was very entertaining speaking of football games the homecoming game and dance has moved a few times this week um <laughs> but just to put it out there i believe and somebody correct me if i'm wrong but last i heard homecoming has been rescheduled for the weekend of the 28th the game will be on the 28th and i think the dance is on the 29th oh the dance is still on the 14th okay so the dance will be on the 14th i'm sorry and the game is going to be on october 28th so everybody please come out um and visit us and see what we're doing out there because it's it's a good time and we love it when the community comes out um let's see i was going to mention the 890 middle schoolers but mm -hmm. you got that already the art awards show uh, the art awards tonight we had a reception for all these kids with their parents before i have to tell y'all we had the best time walking around with all of them showing off their artworks they are so proud of themselves it kind of looked like the beginning of school they're just they're just a blast the parents are proud the kids are proud it was a great time so if you see any of those kids in the community um, that you heard us name tonight even if they weren't here please congratulate them mention it to them they're so proud of themselves um, and we hope to see them come back also because of the days we missed please note um, check our website to be sure you note the days that have changed that we have turned into full days i didn't write them down i should have but um, be sure that you know when we're having our kids in school and not getting out early that kind of thing because um, we did have some of those change and we hope thank goodness the hurricane turned we're hoping fingers <laughs> crossed um, that that's the end of that but we'll we'll see where it goes and then um last but not least um Jackie was was a, an amazing part of this board, and um, he was great to 
to everybody and me, but he would call and say, come on, Darnell, we're going to visit such and such, or meet me here this time, I, we got to go talk to such and such, or, you know, and he, he would drag you around the school and take you into class, you know, not that we won't do it on our own, but Jackie would, he'd shove you in the door and just make sure you, you talk to everybody, so it, it was great, he, he had great energy, he was a great man, and um, he's, he's really going to be missed, I don't think I can add much more than what the ladies have already said, too, so, and I'm sure Bill's going to add stuff. Yeah. And Mr. You. Stefanik's going to add some things too, so yeah. <laughs> I'll turn it over to him. Yeah, just one thing. Um, we're going to do some recognitions uh, out of the central office, but I would be remiss uh, if I didn't say that uh, October uh, has been designated as uh, National Principal Recognition Month. Uh, and uh, uh, if there's a position that uh, sometimes uh, uh, can be a thankless job, uh, it's being the uh, building administrator or principal of a building. Uh, a lot of times people go in and they, they want to um, see their child's teacher uh, or they want to see the you know the gym teacher or they want to see the cafeteria lady uh, there aren't too many times when uh, people are running in uh, for the right reasons to see the principal uh, sometimes they get called in to see the principal but uh, those aren't the happiest of meetings so uh, we're going to try to find a way at the district level to recognize all of our principals for the work they do on a day-to-day -day basis but I just wanted to put it out uh, in public that uh, October is uh, principal recognition month thank you <coughs> I guess in closing, uh, I knew Jackie from the early 1980s. We played softball together, and Mr. Stefanik was even on the team back then when he had hair. <laughs> he had a mustache. <laughs> so we all played. We were uh, great friends. Uh, when I became superintendent, Jackie was on the board for four of the years I was superintendent, and he was chairman two of those years. And then he was a fellow board member of us, you know, for the last six years. So I knew him quite a while. I knew what he stood for. He was a great guy, and we'll certainly miss him. Do I have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Meeting's over. <laughs>